Well, good morning. It is a good morning, isn't it? I'm tired. Anyway, we made it to another week, guys. Good morning and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. A little stuffy this morning. That happens in the mornings a lot. But it is Monday, October 4th, the 27th Monday of Ordinary Time, as well as my dad's birthday. So happy birthday, Dad who shares the same birthday as the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. So, as we know, St. Francis of Assisi is one of the more famous and popular saints. Uh, He was an an Italian Catholic friar, deacon, mystic, and preacher. And uh, he founded, of course, the the Order of Friars. Uh, He also founded the Women's Order of St. Clair, the Third Order of St. Francis, in the custody of the Holy Land. And he is, um, he died in 1226. And he was canonized in 1228. So that did not take long. Um, He said evidently he carried the, the, he carried along with him the five wounds of Jesus, the stigmata, where he was bleeding from his hands and his feet and his side. So he was, he endured that toward the end of his life, even though he only, lived until he was about 44 years old. Um, Huge love of nature and of the Eucharist. Um, And he's well known for his oath of poverty. You know, you'll hear people, you will hear people say a lot, oh, that's so Franciscan of you, or stuff like that. Ooh, anyway. Ooh, I thought this day was going to come. He is the patron saint of, oh, sorry. He is the patron saint of the Franciscan order and of animals, and he, along with Catherine of Siena, is the patron saint of Italy. What is going on here? Let's get to the gospel. Maybe that'll clear me up. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? Or what is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to, to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving from leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the up on the he pa- wait he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his, hand, over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own, on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins, coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the, to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. What is going on? Okay. Good gospel, of course, as all. We got the greatest greatest commandment, as well as the the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let's see what the, the word among us says this morning. It says, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. You almost wish that this scholar of the law would have stopped while he was ahead. He had correctly identified the greatest commandments. Love God with your whole being and love your neighbor as yourself. Everything was going well. Even Jesus approved. But then he pressed on. Luke tells us it was because he wished to justify himself. He was testing the limits of the commandment. How far did did we have to go in order to be justified? Exactly who qualifies as his neighbor? He was expected to love. Did Jesus sigh or roll his eyes? We don't know. 
What we do know is that Jesus took this opportunity to tell a parable to illustrate that his command to love has no limits. Loving your neighbor includes taking care of a stranger. It includes helping someone you think of as an enemy. It includes risking yourself for someone caught on the margins. The scholar seemed to want to soften the law and exempt himself from any obligation to some of his more needy or less acceptable neighbors. But let's not be too quick to point fingers at him. We have probably all wondered what is the least we need to do to get by. Or maybe we've tried to limit the commandments so that they don't require quite so much sacrifice. That's why Jesus tells us how far we should go in order to follow his law, his law of love. How do we do that? How do we imitate the good Samaritan? By paying attention to the people at the side of the road. We can begin with the people right in front of us. Instead of passing over them, we can be sensitive to their needs, even the ones who bother us or drain our patience. If we could do just that, we'll begin to experience the Spirit expanding our hearts. It might sound challenging, but remember that the Spirit lives in you to help you live in God's love. Love of God puts you in touch with His limitless mercy, and that mercy provides the fuel for you to open your heart and your hands to the neighbors who most need your love. Jesus, help me to embrace your limitless mercy. Teach me how to love. All right. Have a great day. God bless and keep it real. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. Happy birthday, Dad. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen.